Good morning and welcome to Casino Baptist Church. My name is Pastor Stephen Gort and I want to thank you for joining with me today. Some great news during the week, folks. The Premier has said that we are allowed to not just have one person, but now up to five possible singers out the front of church and some more instruments as well. Now we have to keep to a few more other guidelines, but that has been a nice change that over the next few weeks we can look to implement. So that's great news. Also great news is that this long weekend we begin a new series. We've come out of the book of Exodus, which was brilliant to look at, and we're going back into the New Testament today, and we're going to start looking at the book of Acts. So if you have your Bibles, you might like to turn with me to Acts chapter 1. But also to go along with that, uh, after our service this morning, we will be holding communion. So if you need to go get the elements, the bread and something to drink, then please do so. So at the end of the message, we will also briefly look at that today. So, have you got your Bibles? Acts chapter 1. And as we begin, let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you for your word. Lord, we pray today that we may listen and apply. In your name. Amen. Now, I wonder how many of you like to say goodbye. I know I don't like to say goodbye to people, particularly people who are really, really close to me. Well, today, as we come to look at Acts chapter 1, I've got that thought regarding the disciples. How are they going to feel in saying goodbye to Jesus because he is about to return to heaven? Now, this series that we're going to look at uh, on the book of Acts, I have called the Church Handbook. Now, I think I borrowed that from a book title or somewhere else where I've heard it in the past. But I think it's a great opportunity as we see the beginnings of the young church, just how they grow and grow as they listen to God's word and as they put it into effect. And in Acts chapter 1, the church begins. You know, the church begins with Jesus saying, you know, I've been with his, the people closest to him, his disciples. He's been with them for three and a half years. They've heard him speak. They've seen the wonderful miracles that he has done. It's been brilliant. They have this really close relationship with Jesus. And then what we see is that the very sad time, he tells them he's going to die, why he goes to Jerusalem, and then he does it. He dies on that cross. And then great news. After and through their sadness, he comes back to life again three days later, showing that he conquered sin, showing that he conquered death. And then he lives with them for another 40 days. Now, this has been a brilliant time that he has spent with these people who are the closest people to him, the disciples and his immediate family. And now in Acts chapter 1, we get to the point where he says after 40 days after the resurrection, he says it's time to go. It's time to return to heaven. But before he goes, he wants to make sure that the disciples do not miss something. He wants to remind them of God's plan for them. Now, at the end of Matthew's gospel, we read the Great Commission, where Jesus sends them out to baptize and to teach in his name that he will be with them always. This, what we find here in Acts chapter 1, God's plan follows on from that. It unpacks that as we begin to look at how that great commission is to actually happen. And the key verse for the whole of the book of Acts, and definitely chapter 1, is verse 8. Now, it's a verse that I think many of you would actually know, and it goes like this. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. God's plan for his disciples? To take the message to the ends of the earth. God's plan for the church today has not changed. God's plan is to take that same message to the ends of the earth. But who gets to carry it out? Well, the Apostle Luke wrote the book of Luke, 
and he wrote the book of Acts. And in verse 8, he tells us, he says, you will be my witnesses. The you there. Now, this is given to the disciples. They, as followers of Jesus, are to take the message and fulfill God's plan. Now, most of us watching this today would probably say that we are part of God's family, that we are followers of Jesus. In a biblical sense, we are disciples. Therefore, this message, you will be my witnesses, folks, that's us. If we say we love and follow Jesus, we are to be that witness. We are to be the ones that carry out God's plan today. Casino Baptist Church is to carry out God's plan. But the obvious question is, well, great, but what's the plan made up of? You know, what, what are we to say? What are we to do? Well, again, verse 8. You, us, disciples, will be my witnesses. This is Jesus speaking. He's the my. So we are to testify. We are to witness. We are to talk about. We are to live a life that shows what we know about Jesus. To people around us. So the obvious question here is, if God's plan is that the message of Jesus is to go out, or the gospel message is to go out to the world, when was the last time we did it? Now I want you just to think about that for a moment. When was the last time you actually talked about the gospel with someone, or shared about Jesus with someone, shared your Christian faith with someone? Now, many of us might have to actually sit there and scratch our heads and take some time to try to work it out. Well, if that's the case, and while you're thinking about when was the last time, let me just give you a few statistics. 15 to 25% of the world's population has not heard the gospel. They have not had an opportunity to hear about the saving grace of Jesus. However, 94% of the world's population through some medium or through uh, the church or knowing Christians, 94% of the world today has an opportunity to hear about the grace of Jesus. 15 to 25% never heard anything. 94% have the possibility to hear something. This is the challenge. The statistics tell us that on average, only 2% of those who say they love and follow Jesus, 2% actually share Jesus with people. That's pretty startling, isn't it? Have you remembered yet? When was the last time you shared Jesus with people? Now, maybe you're still scratching your head or maybe you're starting to come up with excuses and say, Stephen, hey, but... I can't, or I can't do this, or whatever it might be. You know, I've heard lots of excuses over the years. You know, I've heard people say, well, no one told me I had to do it, or it's someone else's job. Isn't that what we pay you for, Stephen? Well, Acts chapter 1, verse 8 says, be my witnesses. You, if you love Jesus, then you are to do it. If you say you follow Jesus today, if you're one a part of God's family, then this is something you need to be doing. Not just someone who gets paid to do it or anything like that. All of us who say we love and follow Jesus should be doing it. Now, maybe you might have heard the excuse that I've had in the past. Well, yeah, Stephen, is it really that important to share Jesus with people? Yeah, let's go back to those statistics. 15 to 25% of the world have heard nothing about the gospel. But 94% of the population should be able to hear and come into contact with the gospel. And when you think about the importance of it, is there anything else in the world that's going to affect what happens when you die? I mean, seriously, is there anything else more important than this? Something that has eternal consequences? I would say not. This is important. Maybe you've heard the, uh, the thought, I even said it yourself, that some that you might say, well, Stephen, someday I'll get around to it. Great. Now, not to be a bit morbid or anything, but how many days you've, have you got? We don't know, do we? Or maybe 
you might think, Stephen, I can't do this in my own strength. It's too hard to share Jesus with people. And you know what? You're right. And you're so right. And God knows you're so right that when we think about verse 8, God gives us help. Let's go back to the opening words. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And back in verse 4 and 5, you know, it says that the Spirit, you're not, he says to his disciples, don't leave Jerusalem because you've got to wait for the Spirit. The Spirit will come on you and then you can do these great things in God's power. So if the thought is, I can't do it in my own strength, you're right. We can't and we don't have to. Jesus gives us the Holy Spirit to help us to be able to do it. Now, I asked a question a little while ago. Who carries out God's plan? Now, as we've looked through here, we've realized that it's to be us, but it's actually God. God does it through us. We just need to let ourselves be used by God. When we read through this book of Acts, it's a beautiful book where we see the disciples do exactly that. The church is born. The church grows. Now, history tells us that by the end of the book of Acts, from 11 people who said they loved and followed Jesus, the church grew to over 200,000 people. God's plan works. Nothing gets in the way of God's plan. And the best part is he wants to use us and he helps us to actually do it. Now, it's interesting here is it talks about the Holy Spirit. Now, one way that we can connect with the Holy Spirit and is to pray. So when you think about the last time you shared Jesus with people, or if you think, I can't think of a last time I've done it, have you prayed about doing it? Have you prayed about God showing you or giving you the people you should be sharing with? Have you asked God to give you the words to say? Have you asked God to give you the feet and the boldness? Because God does give us opportunities. Have you prayed for the feet and the boldness and the words to take the opportunities that God gives us? Now, I think uh, I saw a car the other day that had run out of petrol. And when I saw that, it reminded me that we often try to do things in our own strength, don't we? And when we try to do them in our own strength without God... It's a bit like that car that ran out of petrol. We got no petrol. We got no power. We're not going anywhere. We need to rely more on God. So this week, now we start to think we are the ones to be doing this. If our church is to be doing this, a casino Baptist church, what part is the Holy Spirit playing? How long and how much are we praying when we come to this? Now, when we think about uh, the uh, opening chapters of the book of Acts, we see the disciples, they're going to pray. They're going to bring things to God and to ask for God's help. And God answers their prayers. But when we look at this, one of the other obvious questions is, well, how big is our part in all of this? What does it actually mean that we are to be the witnesses of Jesus to people? Well, the Apostle Luke, who wrote the book of uh, the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts, he says here that when we are to be the witnesses, he wanted us to make sure we captured the words of Jesus, that we that Jesus spelled it out very clearly. Witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now, we glibly, I think, say today, uh, who, do we, who should we share Jesus with? Everyone. But we often don't. We don't often don't with even one person. But we just say we do. But let's think a little bit. When Jesus said these words to the disciples, what would they have heard? Now, he said to be witnesses in Jerusalem. Now, most of the disciples were Jewish. They would have had Jewish families. So when it took, and Jerusalem was the center of the Jewish people. So when it says to be witnesses in Jerusalem, Jesus is talking about witnessing to your own home, witnessing to your family. So 
my question to you is the same question I'm asking to me as well today. When we hear that, are we witnesses in Jerusalem? Are you witnessing the story of Jesus and the gospel in your own home? Is there someone in your home who doesn't know Jesus? Are you speaking into that? Further, it says to be witnesses in Judea. Now, that picture here is that, again, it's, it's like the extended family. When you think about your extended family outside of your immediate home, who doesn't know Jesus? Why don't they know Jesus? Do they know you know Jesus? And are you taking the opportunity to share with them? It says witnesses here in Samaria. Now, Samaria was a neighbour to the Jewish people. Do you know your neighbours? Do you know those around your house? Do you know those closest to you at school or at work? Or maybe if you belong to a club or a sporting team, do you know the people there? Are you building relationships with them so that you can share Jesus with them? Now, the interesting thing is, Samarians are Jews. They did not, did not get along. So when they didn't get along, do you only look to share Jesus with those who you are friends with? Those you get along with? Those who are easy to get along with? Those who are like you? Or do you actually share Jesus with those who are harder? Maybe those who rub you the wrong way type people. Do you pick and choose who gets to hear about Jesus? Or do you witness in Samaria? Do you witness, as it finishes, to the ends of the earth? Uh, what is the limit? And I want you to think about this very quickly. What is the limit on how far you can reach with the gospel? Now, most of us would say, you know, to the ends of the earth. Today, with modern technology and other things, we can reach wherever the ends of the earth might be. What's your limit? And if you, as you think about that, and if you think your limb is not that large at all, not that wide, why is it not that wide? See, this is God's plan for the church. God's plan for the disciples. God's plan is that he will help us testify and witness about Jesus to our communities. The challenge is, will we? And sometimes... When we think about doing things, I think the challenge is our perspective. Now, you know the old story about a shoe company wanting to go to Africa, sent two sales reps to Africa. One came back to the parent company and said, there's no point in going to Africa because no one wears shoes. The other uh, salesman came back a little while later and said, this is the best place on the planet. We can sell so many shoes because everyone is barefoot. It's a matter of perspective, isn't it? And I think we lose perspective when we think about the gospel. We lose perspective when we think about what God has done for us. Now, in a little while at communion, we're going to remind ourselves of that. But just think briefly. Now, Jesus, when we didn't do anything for God, when we didn't like God, when we were God's enemy, God loved us so much that his own son Jesus died on that cross, was raised to life three days later so that we could conquer death, conquer sin by just believing in him and then following him. Isn't that awesome? Do you, what does that mean for you? And what does it mean when you make mistakes? As we looked at you know, the other week in the book of Exodus, we have a God of second, third and fourth chances. God offers us grace. God offers us mercy. God offers us forgiveness. We don't deserve it. I don't deserve it, but God offers it anyway. We just have to accept that free gift. If you, What does that mean for you today? What does it mean for you, what God has done in your life? When you think about that, if the perspective is that that's the greatest news ever and it's the greatest thing ever, then don't you want to share it? But if the perspective is it doesn't mean that much, 
or my parents did it, I'm just following them, or whatever it might be. If it doesn't mean that much, then why doesn't it mean that much for you today? You know, knowing what God has done, has it become stale for you? You know, why doesn't it mean something? What can change for you to change your perspective today? See, I think we often lose our perspective and therefore we lose how much God has done for us. Therefore, we don't share the message of Jesus with others. But this plan of God that begins or start or continues in Acts chapter 1 and is spelled out as the early church begins, they grab hold of this. We need to witness. We need to testify in Jerusalem, in Samaria, in Judea, and to the ends of the earth. We need to do this because that's what God wants. The challenge is, will we answer that call today? When you think of how you live your life, when you think of the decisions you make every day, when we think about the decisions we make here at church, whether it's to do with the preschool, whether it's to do with our uh, church itself and the ministries that we do, or whatever it might be, any decision that we make, does it fit with God's plan? Does it fit that we want to share Jesus with the community around us? Acts chapter 1 reminds us in Jesus' words as he says goodbye to the disciples, don't forget God's plan. Be my witnesses. Testify about me to the world. Friends, family, are we doing that today at Casino Baptist Church? Are we doing that in our own homes, in our school, in our workplaces? in our streets? Are we answering God's call today to fulfill his plan? Let me pray. Gracious Father, forgive us when we don't fill and fulfill your plan. Lord, help us this week. Show us the people to talk to. Grant us the words and give us the boldness and the feet to reach out to them with the gospel and the love of Jesus this week. Father, help us to be the people that you can use to fulfill your plan for our world. And we pray for this today in your name. Amen. Now, I just want to say today that when I read this, I'm challenged. Challenged to think about everything we do. Does it help or does it hinder reaching people for Christ. What about you? What about your life, your family, how you do church? Let's think about that this week. We're going to come now uh, to a time of communion and the elements that we're going to look at and when we come to communion in the Lord's table, it reminds us that how much God loves us and how much God has done and what is he going to do in the future. So as we think about God's plan and we think about perspectives and things today as we go through this may this be a time where we are challenged the apostle Paul when he wrote to the church at Corinth he said this for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of of me. This morning I have a piece of bread and as we come together and as we break it and if you've got bread where you are today please join with me as we do. Jesus when he broke this said remember you know in a couple of hours time my body is broken for you so that you can be forgiven. Today we are only forgiven because of that broken body. Let's take and eat. Afterwards, the Apostle Paul went on and said this. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. 
For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So friends, let's do that. If you've got uh, some grape juice there or something else uh, that you can drink, we stand before God. Everyone stands before God one day. When God looks at us, we can't stand on our own merit. But if you love and follow Jesus, if you remember what he did at the cross, if you hold on to that, it reminds us that when we stand before God, we are washed whiter than snow because of the blood that was shed on that cross. So as we drink today, let's be thankful and remember what Jesus has done for us. We are forgiven because of him. Let us drink. Let me pray. Father, we do say thank you today. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you that you went to the cross when we were your enemies. Lord, today, we want to be the people you want us to be. We don't want to lose perspective. We want to be reminded every single day of the joy and the grace and the mercy that's offered to us. And then we want to go live it out. So Lord, help us to do that this week, I pray in your name. Amen. Well, thank you again for joining with us today. It's great that we can still meet like this. If you can join us physically, Casino Baptist Church, 10 a.m. next week, but also 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday evening, Facebook Live. Just go to the church's Facebook page and you'll see the link there. May God bless you this week and may we gather again in the coming week and remember the greatness, remember all that he has done and go out this week and live God's plan. See you next week.